I'm really very fond of the I Ching. The I Ching, uh, or the weft of exchange, is a very famous uh, classic of Chinese culture, which was mm, by margins uh, saved by the Qin Emperor as the books that were permitted to be read because of his uh, uh, literary cleansing uh, and book burnings, uh, which almost no books escaped uh, from the past. And this is why we have a very single-minded idea about uh, Chinese culture. The thing that uh, the Qin Emperor did is he standardized uh, Chinese culture, everything. So he also standardized meanings and what things mean. And a lot of meanings uh, have been transmitted after that only uh, in an oral way and they haven't been transmitted in a literary way. So some things of these things, they later on were being put back to paper. And as a result that we have some understanding of it muted through generations of, uh, well, thinning out meanings by added meanings, by mixed up meanings, mixing cultures, mixing ideologies and of course the previous upbringing from the people who were actually learning it. And in that sense uh, we go through sort of a similar time in this time but in a very short period. We do the same thing, we mix all kind of cultures and we mix up meanings and we eventually will end up with a mishmash of half understood truths. My uh, first uh, I Ching I bought when I was about 14 or 15 and this was the Wilhelm uh, I Ching and a little bit later I bought the Lega I Ching uh, one in English, one in Dutch The Dutch translation of course was a interpretation from the German from the English probably or German whatever and eventually it became uh, a sort of mishmash of Goethean ideas uh, propagated by uh, Wilhelm which had very little to do with the I Ching. The text translation that he used as a foundation uh, also was from the Qing dynasty and the Qing dynasty was an anti-Chinese dynasty in the sense that they tried to get rid of a lot of Chinese ideas uh, such as Wu Xing, Yin Yang and so on and so on. Plus that the dynasty was also very well known for its orthodox Confucianism which was in many ways repressive uh, or uh, sexist, racist and all kind of other things that you didn't want to know and you see that in the way how the I Ching is interpreted, interpreted uh, in its translation and in uh, the original text which were being used in the Qing dynasty for that for version of the I Ching. So I'm planning to give a course on uh, I Ching uh, to rectify some of the ideas uh, that people have because I collected in the running course of my time about 80 different kind of uh, I Chings and at a certain point I ended up with uh, that one of uh, Richard Kunst, quite big, his historical research, very interesting, but his translation was, well, you can really see that he did it from his head and uh, what he thought would be right as an interpretation or a meaning but not necessarily from what it said in the Chinese. So at a certain point I get so annoyed from all the mistranslations and the confusions and the ambigu ambiguities that everybody left in because they always revert to Legge and uh, Wilhelm as a first reference. So all these I Ching were only improvements on the original translation and there were no real translation. I spent six years on translating and I discovered a lot of things. I did my research uh, into backgrounds, language, uh, culture. Uh, I did do questions and answer sessions with Taoists, with uh, uh, neo-Taoists, with all kinds of sects that I went to visit to see how they dealt with uh, the same uh, I Ching. And as a result of that, uh, I came eventually to my final version when I was living in the Wudang Mountains and I got my interpretation from several Taoists uh, in Wudang from different monasteries including the ones of my own teacher and the methods that they used 
and that they transcended from the past and I got some references from the uh, Tao Tang also and meanings and uh, the cloud satchel to see what they actually meant with things so on the basis of all these kind of things and uh, a compendium that I have with uh, diagrams of the I Ching comprised uh, in well, about 60 years ago that's three parts and uh, these three parts they give basically all the visual representations of I Ching and related I Ching including the Western influences uh, and uh, we will discuss all these things in the course of course but this movie gives you a brief introduction the I Ching is based on the notion of yin and yang uh, yin yang shui or yin yang ke, yin yang signs is in fact the foundation of most of Chinese scientific culture so it also permeates uh, the Tai Chi Chuan, Kung Fu uh, the Qigong, the Neigong, the Tao Yin, the meditation, the Taoist spirituality, it invigorates and is the foundation of Chinese medicine such as massage, acupuncture, herbal medicine and so on. It is also the foundation of anatomy and physiology of your own body. So in all our studies at the IOC Daoland, we are founding ourselves on this theory and what the I Ching clarifies is that the world exists from yin and yang and it explains yin and yang as light which is this part the green part of the world you see light is manifested through its reflections you can't see light directly but you can feel it as warmth and you can feel that your light your face starts shining when it's on your face but uh, the absence of light this is the yin and you see here between the trees there is the absence of uh, light of course yin and yang comes in all kinds of sorts and kinds and the yin and yang that we experience in our daily life are pretty much averages and it's because of these averages that life exists and the whole I Ching is based on how averages permeate life and how extremes kill it you see here the light of the sun Tai Yang that means bigger yang and that is pretty much extreme yang but if you look at the clouds, you see there is yin inside yang. The clouds are water and they are inside the yang. And the blue is the sky, which is still relatively humid and has uh, kong qi inside. And the kong qi actually is a yin in a particular way, but it originates in yang. It is a thicker version, a lower version of uh, yang. The dark sky behind it, this is the ultimate yang. And it expands and it expands endlessly without ever thinking about human beings. The interesting thing, I think, from uh, the I Ching perspective on heaven is that it looks at heaven as a deified something, uh, but at the same time, it doesn't see it as the home of a god that is actually caring for humans or inventing humans. It actually thinks about uh, nature as something that it just happens to be producing as a byproduct of its own existence and as a result of this byproduct of its own existence we exist too but as existence in itself it doesn't really matter that we are here or that we are not here i think i'm walking into the yin part of the forest and there is a fence there like don't go there in effect Taoism claims that there are many different kind of heavens and there are about 36 which are inhabited by gods that sometimes interfere in our human reality our human reality is one of the lower realms and it's in between the realm of uh, heaven and earth and earth uh, is in itself also subdivided in different realms and the surface of the earth which has many different kind of manifestations they are all part of our realm of uh, human so that means that according to the I Ching the world is divided in three realms heaven, earth and our natural realm so when we talk about nature in the I Ching we actually talk about the human realm if we talk about heaven we talk about uh, the will of heaven and then we talk about basically the ordering part of heaven which helps the world being created not by doing that itself but by giving uh, sort of a seed 
to the earth and the earth actually produces all the different kind of things the pressures of heaven also create mountains and hills and not only forests and trees and birds and insects and people uh, it creates actually a lot of different kind of things and these lot of different kind of things they all benefit us as people living in here because we can know it everything that is in the earth we cannot really know we can only infer it from our contact with ghosts and spirits and uh, we can only know what is in heaven by our contacts with gods and spirits the same uh, we can become an immortal uh, so that we can reach up into heaven and as a result of this reaching up into heaven we can eventually uh, uh, become one with the gods and we can become a god ourselves so that people can worship us that is the aim of many Taoists uh, to become eventually part of the heavenly realm that means that over time the heavenly realm is increasingly busy uh, but so is the earthly realm because everybody who dies who hasn't been cultivating themselves they will go into the earth and that is what is called the hell realm because there we are being weighted and they go to look at what kind of person we are so heaven and earth are two opposite polarizing things which we call pre-heaven and this pre-heaven thing has to help us understand where we get power from and our heritage as children according to Yi Jing studies is also based on the interaction of our parents which are Yang and Yin as a father and a mother but also on the inference of heaven and earth what happened at a certain point is that in the time when there was no writing yet the now immortal or God Fu Si he invited an eight-folded script based on the ideas of yin and yang and I'm going to talk to you about it in a moment one of the nice things that uh, I Ching says that nature exists within its own limitations of form and what we do is we repeat basically nature and everything we do so we imitate nature as much as we can which makes us a little bit think about the dilemma of Western culture where we think about God as the creator of all things and human beings as being a sort of a co-creator and not being able to create life but at least things art art is one of these things that we make that we can make very lifelike and as a result of that create something which is similar to what nature does that's what her Christianity says when we look at uh, Chinese culture we see that everything is art and everything we make is art and we imbue things with a particular kind of existence and this existence in a way has its own well relationship with the environment which we can compare with consciousness and that consciousness is yang or yin when it is yin it can't really do very much about its existence when it is yang it can do a lot about its existence from the I Ching it is inferred by Confucians and by Taoists in a later time that like farming and raising cattle we can also raise and farm ourselves and we can cultivate ourselves so that we can become more like earth or heaven and usually the pathway is that we first go to become more like earth so that we become creative and from being creative we gradually grow to become like earth and that means we first become fluffy like the clouds I guess in nature you come across all kind of uh, bogs and swamps which are in itself an important uh, aspect of uh, the earth because things happen in there and the swamps and the lakes and the bogs they are seen as the clouds of earth when you project the same principle to heaven uh, you can see that the clouds in the heavens they are like the bogs and the lakes on the earth itself but then of course in heaven and as a result of that you see that what happens in heaven is being repeated in the earth in a particular kind of way that's the co-creation process of heaven and earth so when we talk about uh, bogs we talk about uh, things you can draw in so in itself clouds but also uh, lakes and swamps they are indications of uh, you know a little bit dangerous areas
the shield is green it's all green is all woody in nature so is the wind and so is also uh, all kind of other things uh, which have to do with things like magic and self-cultivation and all kind of other people things and nature things and this life what it represents is something that is cultivated and it is cultivated because through life you can get into that one holy place that allows you to be in contact with both heaven and earth which is usually called the magic of heaven earth and water because water is the foundation of life uh, water is the nourishment of life and if there is no water the life doesn't really go anywhere earth itself comes in two different kinds on the one hand it is the soil in which plants and trees grow that you find on the forest floor and that you find under the grains and everything at the same time it is also the earth itself and as you can see from earth itself yes it is compact compacting easy and becomes dirt and sticky and when earth is accumulated highly because of the decay of wood uh, or because of the burning of wood and turning into ashes uh, by the way decay that is actually fire uh, working on wood in uh, the eating then at that moment you can see that the compacting of earth leads to higher and higher pressures and that things that are not easy to decompose gradually because of its compacting they become what is called noble materials and these noble materials like gold silver jade uh, these are valuable valuables that people get from the earth to make either jewelry or uh, weapons or to till the soil or to fight with each other when they feel like uh, doing so. Fulci also explained the differences in height uh, between uh, the different places of earth like the bogs and the lakes they are very low and the mountains they reach up from the earth and they go all the way to heaven and mountains like buildings and doorways and so on and so on they're all places to go to another place so the mountain is the place where you come closer to heaven and you can feel almost like in heaven that's why actually Taoism built temples in heaven so that you could uh, be closer to the light of the everlasting you know heaven look a tree with warts one of the nice things about nature is it always tries to connect with its environment so in itself the nature is a network the eight trigrams of the parkwa they are a sign of networking and there's nothing that tries not to relate to you so the concept of loneliness is something that doesn't happen and it's actually through the shadows and through the light that we can come to understand that and the pathway we have to follow to do that is to try to find our way back through our actions to the face of heaven to come from the shadows into the light Just know.